And welcome to the online class again ya. Selamat datang lagi di kelas belajar free online class di sini bersama saya Mr. Gabe ya. Uh, you can call me Gabe as well. Also, uh, today we will be learning English together ya. Masih dalam masa pandemi saya mau ingatkan untuk teman-teman agar selalu pakai masker, mencuci tangan, menjauhi uh, kerumunan, juga menjaga jarak dengan orang-orang lain dan jangan lupa untuk mengurangi mobilitas. Dengan mengurangi mobilitas kita bisa belajar untuk menghindari pencegahan COVID ya. Dan karena mobilitasnya berkurang, berarti kita belajar di rumah aja. Just like now. Seperti sekarang, kita akan belajar tentang teknologi of the future. Nah, masa depan, modern world. Kita sering mendengar istilah modern. And also the world future. Modern berarti modern dan future berarti masa depan. Tetapi apa sih sebenarnya menjadi uh, patokan modern? Ya? Kapan suatu dianggap modern dan kapan suatu dianggap old fashion? Nah, old fashion itu adalah lawan kata dari modern. Sebenarnya nggak ada definisi pastinya ya. Modern itu lebih mirip dengan sesuatu kebiasaan yang biasa dilakukan orang-orang sekarang, the way you live right now. Sementara old fashion adalah kebiasaan yang dilakukan orang-orang zaman dahulu, sebelum sekarang. Jadi secara teknis, ya, kalau kamu hidup di abad pertengahan tahun 1500-an and then you are actually doing the things melakukan hal-hal yang biasa dilakukan oleh orang-orang di tahun 1500-an ya hitungannya kamu udah modern ya hitungannya kamu udah jauh lebih modern dibandingkan dengan orang-orang yang hidup di zaman Mesir kuno misalnya so yeah and that is the definition of the word modern modern is in fact you live a life like everyone else Today, yeah, you live the way the lifestyle just like how everyone is. Hidupnya sama seperti orang lain. Kebanyakan di zaman di mana kamu hidup, ya. Jadi relevan, apa? Nggak saya ambil karena saya very futuristic, ya. Tapi lebih ke relevan dengan waktu atau period di mana kamu berada. Like I said, kalau kamu hidup di abad ke 19 di zaman di era Victorian English, zaman Sherlock Holmes itu masih pakai cangklong. And they were this deer hunter hat. Uh, they live like an episode of Sherlock Holmes atau the irregular TV itu. <laughs> itu hanya kamu sudah jauh lebih modern daripada hidup di zaman William Wallace di Scotland ya, uh, di zaman besi dulu. Seperti itu. Okay, uh, I would like also to say hi to those of you who already joined this class. Thank you very much and good afternoon ya. Selamat datang. Kita akan segera menuju ke materi kita yang pertama ya. Buat kalian yang merasa bahwa sinyalnya kurang bagus, mungkin uh, videonya putus-putus atau soundnya putus-putus, silakan tulis di chat ya. Silakan cari juga tempat ya with better reception. Maybe you can find a place where uh, apa namanya the signal is better. And if you have any question, if you want to say something, anything, just write down in the chat section. I'm going to ask you to do some exercise as well. And I want you to answer it on the chat section. Okay, so before we go to our uh, topics, I want you to see how the people back in the 1920s yeah, think about the future. Kalau kita pikir-pikir, zaman sekarang, yeah, nowadays, and then I come with the word, hey, what do you think the future is going to look like? Menurutmu masa depan itu akan terlihat seperti apa? We would imagine living in another planet, yeah, kan? living in Mars, mungkin living with uh, hologram, with uh, anything. But let's take a look a little bit about what do people imagine the future is going to be like in the 1920s. Kita akan lihat sedikit bayangan apa yang dipikirkan orang-orang tahun 1920-an tentang hidup di masa depan. Okay? Kita akan lihat videonya. I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, mana ya? Oh, hold on. Oke, okay, okay, okay. nah, nah. kita akan share dulu the videonya. Nah, ya, yeah. this one and ya, yeah. oke. Okay, yeah. I think you can see this. Sudah kelihatan ya semuanya ya. Oke, okay, kelihatan ya. Oke, okay, I'll play. It. Here we go.
Some of the most famous fashion designers in the U.S. today have been asked to forecast what Eve will look like in A.D. 2000. One idea is a dress that can be adapted for morning, afternoon or evening. It's the sleeves what does it. Apparently in A.D. 2000 we shall be having a hair-raising time. Yet another designer goes so far as to believe that skirts will disappear entirely. Shoes will have cantilever heels and an electric belt will adapt the body to climatic changes. The lightly clad woman of tomorrow, ooh, swish, will move in an atmosphere that's scientifically kept at the right temperature. The future bride in a wedding dress of glass. What the groom will wear, apart from a worried look, isn't mentioned. A dress of aluminium, with a sash to change it for afternoon or evening, and an electric headlight to help her to find an honest man. As for him, if he matters at all, he'll be fitted with a telephone, a radio, and containers for coins, keys, and candy for cuties. No one can clearly foresee the city of the future, but the appearance of any city, of any period of history, is a direct outcome of the social, economic, and technical conditions then existing. The cities of the future would be laid out to a master plan. Streets and buildings no longer haphazard, but harmoniously related. Structural ingenuity would, of course, go on producing unusual forms, perhaps suspension bridge apartment houses. These would surely provide wide vistas for the bridge dwellers and perhaps gratify the very human desire for novelty and romance. There must be broad avenues, providing trees and ease of movement, with light and pure air for all buildings. Perhaps the master stroke of planning would be to segregate on one hand future highly efficient automatic industrial centers, producing all our needed goods and distributing them in abundance. New centers of leisure would arise, around which we would live, fully participating in the sports, the arts and the sciences, in fact in all the activities which make life worth living. Here's a peep through a future window of the world. This monster plane will carry 600 passengers and a huge wing and double fuselage houses luxurious lounges and reading rooms. It will speed from London to New York in a day. Future aerodromes will be centers for highway, skyle and rail carriers. Landing on top of the huge aerodrome, planes will taxi to a ramp, descend to a lower level and discharge their passengers. At still lower levels, motor highways, railroads and pneumatic mail tubes will have terminals. Here's a ship which has the streamlined form which ocean liners of the future may take. The streamlining is the shape of an object so that it will cause the minimum turbulence of the air passing round. The porpoise, one of the fastest things that swims, is a splendid example of nature's streamline. The body, the fins and tail are all curved and have their blunt ends tapering towards the rear. In designing this ship, the streamline principle has been applied to the entire superstructure. This rounded, unbroken surface from stem to stern not only reduces wind resistance, but also lessens the water that comes over the bow and stern in heavy weather. The part of a conventional liner above the water line is about as large as a solid block of seven-storied buildings. 900 feet long and 100 feet wide. Tremendous power is required to move this immense mass over 25 miles an hour. Projections like the bridge, deck and lifeboats disturb the flow of air as the ship passes through it, setting up turbulences which reduce the ship's efficiency. This model of an ocean-going yacht is based on streamlined principles. The deck coverings can be rolled back in fair weather. The future will no doubt see streamlined ships which will be faster, more comfortable, and safer than anything we know today. Okay, so that was what future was like for the people in the 1920s. Now, remember that this is just a few years after the sons of Titanic. Right, after the sink, you know, basically Titanic was sunk in 1912, if I'm not mistaken, or 1914. That was only a few years before the video was made. So think about that. A few years after Titanic went down to the bottom of the sea, they started imagining like, oh, mungkin di masa depan, we are going to have this kind of thing. But some of those predictions actually came true. Some of those are quite, apa namanya ya, are quite normal. As you can see, Tadi baju brightnya ada pakai apa namanya warna-warna metalik. Nowadays you can find a lot of bright uh, uh, brights gone with metallic color. 
tadi ada yang pakai lampu di kepala. Now then you can easily find lead uh, put into hair, put even into teeth, yeah. So it's quite common nowadays. Some of those are also quite uh, surprisingly correct, like the cruise ship. Ternyata memang betul kan, cruise ship zaman sekarang bentuknya streamline. So yeah, it was a good thing. Although some others are quite weird. Why would you have a phone on your chest with coins, isn't it? Like, the kalau nelfon kamu harus masukin coin. Kalau apa? Kamu jalan dulu habis, I need to put some more coins. That was just weird. But okay, uh, at least we see from another perspective. So now let's go to our material, right? So here we go. We have the modern world, right? Okay, as you can see, the girl in the video is wearing a device. Does anyone know what does that device uh, name is? I don't know that. What is the name of that device that girl is wearing? Well, I don't know. Silakan tulis di chat ya. What that girl is wearing? A lot of people say it's 3D. It's exactly. It's actually not. It is actually called a VR goggles, yeah. Virtual reality uh, Google uh, goggles, not Google. Sorry, virtual reality goggles. Some virtual reality now got even more uh, apa ya, advanced that they have this thing called augmented reality. Augmented reality is when something out of virtual reality come into the real world. Contohnya misalnya uh, saya punya virtual reality mobil gitu kan ya, a small car in my hand, and then that uh, virtual reality car of a 3D hologram, I can put it on. For example, on the shelf, in here, in the point here, and on the screen, you can see the car is just standing perching over here, and that is augmented reality. I can also move it, and then place it somewhere else. That is augmented reality. Sadly, uh, this broadcasting has no budget for the CGI, so all of that thing. You have to use your imagination. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that was the idea of augmented reality. Okay, so let's go to our next topic then. All right. Now, here we go. Lead in. Uh, these are some of the, what we call nowadays gadgets. Yeah, Gadgets are uh, basically things that we are using and very close to us. Okay. Gadgets itu berasal dari bahasa Perancis, Gauche. Yeah. Artinya adalah semacam benda untuk mengikat simpul di kapal. People basically don't know what it's called, so they just call it gadget, yeah? and then it becomes an English word gadget. Okay, look at the picture below. Which do you think is the most useful, and which one is the least useful, and why? Discuss it with your friends. Hmm, guys, which one do you think is the most useful? Ah, uh, I think. What is this thing? Is it hard drive? I will go with this one with Apple phone, yeah, uh, iPhone. iPhone is probably the most useful. It has a camera, it has audio, it has phone, it has everything basically that you need except rice cooker. So yeah, I would say uh, the most uh, useful thing is that iPhone. And which one is the most unuseful or the least useful? Apa ya? If I have to ask for the least useful, I don't know. Mm. Yes, but it looks like a lamp. Uh, and this one, what is this? It looks like a box or something. And this one is a controller for uh, for a Xbox, I think, yeah, or for a generic computer controller. So yeah, well, if I say the least useful, that will probably be the least useful one, especially if you're not playing games. If you are just walking in the street, yeah, and then you have that in your hand, people will probably think like, oh, you're going to a uh, Rental PS dengan bawa asik uh, custom sendiri. But other than that, you have no idea for what. Unless you are holding a remote control uh, toy or you are using a drone. So that is very normal to walk in the public with that thing. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think it's very useful. Right. Okay. So let's read the news below. Teenager makes millions with news apps. Now, this is something that is getting more and more common that people are getting rich just because they invented a new app. Yeah? A British teenager has become multimillionaire after selling an app he created to the web giant Yahoo. The deal is reported to be worth of 
up to 30 million dollar and includes a position working on Yahoo's future mobile project. Nick D'Aloysio started his Sumly app when he was just 15. He was studying for school exams and become frustrated at plowing through lengthy online articles. He created the app to summarize long reports so people could more easily digest the content. Yahoo's boss of mobile content development, Adam Cahan, said, It starts with an insight that we live in a world of constant information and need new ways to simplify how we find the stories that are important to us at a glance. If you think about it, this is basically another way to instantize everything. Yeah? And even this one is an instantized information. Okay, take a look at this one. Mr. Di Aloysio started coding when he was 12 years old and he developed the bulk of his assembly app in his bedroom. He launched his app when he was 15, and it has soon attracted over $15 million of investment, including from Hollywood stars Aston Kutcher and Stephen Fry. The acquisition by Yahoo makes the British teen one of the world's youngest self-made millionaires. He believes his uh, tie-up with Yahoo is perfect, saying, to me, Yahoo is the best company to be joining right now because it is one of the classic internet companies. With new leadership from Marissa Mayer, Yahoo has a strong focus on mobile and product, and that's the perfect fit for family. Okay, so you've read what the article about, so let's find out and answer these questions one by one. What was the British teenagers become? Anyone remember? You can write it down in the chat section. What has he become? He has become uh, one of the youngest. Stuff. made millionaires. I mean, he makes a lot of money. He made millions of money on his own by creating this small app. Yeah. Up next, we have, what will he do at Yahoo? Well, they said that he's going to have a position at Yahoo. So, well, we're finding out what is that is. What frustration led him to start suddenly? Ah. You can answer me the chat section, guys. Apa sih penyebabnya dia membuat aplikasi itu? Why he start Sumly? Number three, yeah. What frustration that led him to start Sumly? Why? Why is he creating Sumly? Silakan tulis jawabannya di section uh, chat ya, di bagian chat. Well, it was clear that he was frustrated because he's about to have a test, and the references are really, really long. You don't want to read it too long. Yeah? TLDR, yeah? too long, don't read. So he just go and summarize everything up and he created that program called Family. Okay. What kind of world did Yahoo boss say we live in? <laughs> we live in the world where... No, I was about to quote Dr. Ron Justice League. No, that was wrong. <laughs> we live in the modern world where people every day need more and more um, information on the go, yeah? Fast like this. So they don't have time to read uh, information that is lengthy and time consuming, and so they need it to be quick about it, yeah? Right. Uh, how much of the app did Nick develop in his bedroom? Well, he has basically the book of it, yeah? The majority of it was developed in his own bedroom. Personally, uh, I think this is very much possible. Working in bedroom is so much uh, easier and you can actually develop a lot of stuff. I have a friend who is actually a programmer and a web developer, and he actually works in his bedroom and he made millions of it, millions of US dollars. Uh, and he can travel the world um, and got invited into seminars because uh, he created those kind of things from his bedroom. Wow. Right, who invested in some league? Well, there are a lot of uh, celebrities that actually involved in this one, yeah? Uh, it was mentioned that Stephen Fry and then Aston Kutcher was also in this kind of thing, right? And what is the Yahoo's acquisition him, uh, made him to be? Well, that acquisition made him the youngest millionaire that was made from an application. But nowadays, we see a lot of people getting rich because of application. And because of information technology. Matter of fact, the number one, um, what do you call it? The number one richest person in the world, Jeff Bezos, well, he also he was also in that business. 
Jeff Bezos owns the Amazon, right? And he got a lot of money from there. And if you think about it, Sergey Brin, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, apa namanya, the guy who invented TikTok, maybe, yeah? They all got rich because they invented something so easy and so uh, useful to a lot of people. I don't know if you consider TikTok as useful or not, but I mean, a lot of people are advertising commercially with that, yeah? Instagram, right, uh, etc. Okay, what kind of company did Nick say Yahoo was? Well, it was one of the traditional internet company. Yeah? I started using internet when I was six. At sixth grade, when I was thinking, uh, plus enough, yeah, I started using internet, and it was way back in 1994. And in 1995, uh, there were only like two or three were left in Jogja, and we cannot get uh, internet access easily. Uh, one of the first warnet in Jogja that I know is uh, in what is now that Muslim shop in Urban Street. Uh, there used to be a food court and they got a small internet cafe there. And then they also, there was also another uh, another internet cafe that I know is in either Jalan Solo or Budayan, somewhere around there. But those are the two first internet cafe that I know back in the 1995. And even back in 1995, I already used Yahoo. <laughs> so yes, Yahoo is one of the pioneer uh, of internet. Only after a few, uh, few years after that, I started, you know, using Google. But before that, it was always Yahoo. All right. Uh, what is Yahoo focusing on? Well, Yahoo nowadays is focusing on consumer and handheld appliances. Yeah? Uh, I'm, I see this with this downfall of Yahoo because people are now starting to go with Google and uh, Yahoo, well, Yahoo did provide news, but Google is like the ultimate search engine. Like then we also have not only Google, we have Alta Vista, you have Netscape, yeah? but nowadays we don't just Google everything. Matter of fact, the word Google, it doesn't have menjadi kata dalam bahasa Inggris, and you can actually find it in dictionary. Google, to Google something, it's a verb. That means to look for an information on the internet, based uh, on, on the search engine of Google. Yeah, jadi Google udah jadi kata dalam bahasa Inggris ya. It is a verb now. Right. Uh, let's go to our next topic. I, uh, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna go to... Nah. Let's go next. Hop. Oh, what is that? Oh, sorry, <laughs> this one. Is it... For, uh, hold on. Oh, sorry. The, the computer froze. Udah, udah gak lagi. <laughs> okay. Uh, come on. Come on. Right. So this is the... Uh, this is the adverb of sequence, okay? Adverbs of sequence yeah, almost come uh, at the beginning of a sentence and are followed by a comma. This, with this adverb of uh, sequence, we know which one happens first. And we can also tell which one is the priority in that matter, yeah? So adverbs of sequence work as an, an order, sebuah urutan. Okay, let's check this one. Adverbs of sequence almost always come at the beginning of a sentence and usually are followed by comma. Before breakfast, comma, you should clean your room. So, ini adalah contoh salah satunya adverb of sequence before. Berarti sebelumnya. Nah, di sini kita terlihat mana yang terjadi duluan. Ya, yang terjadi duluan adalah you should clean your room, baru kemudian breakfast. After lunch, I go to the shop. Mana yang terjadi duluan? Lunch dulu atau go to the shop? Lunch dulu, baru go to the shop. First, do your homework. From here we know that doing your homework is the first thing that you have to do. Yang kedua, second, wash the dishes. Okay, urutannya, setelah doing homework, you gotta wash the dishes. Yang ketiga, walk the dog. Third, and next, read to your sister. And finally, you can relax. So finally, means kalau udah selesai dengan semuanya, berarti, apa namanya, you can do the thing next. Okay, so we are going to 
put the steps in the correct order. We're gonna make the bed. Yang mana dulu ya? Uh, kita akan lihat kalimat mana duluan. Apakah cover the bed with a blanket? Place your doll on the pillow. Pull the sheets up and smooth it out. Lay the pillow at the head or tuck the sheet under the mattress. So let's do it with me. I'm going to do it together. Uh, number one, what we should do is uh, we are going to pull the shifts up and spot it out. So this will be number one. And then I'm going to say, firstly, pull the shit, pull the shit up. Uh, yeah. I've got Sasuria, yeah. Like, Sasuria. Angkat spray-nya dan di lapisan. Remember from that, cover your bed with the blanket and the pillow and the head. Okay. I will go with the one. I will go with number two, play, and then you second play. Play the pillow at the head. Right, let's go number three. I'll just go with number three. <laughs> Place your doors. All right. How do you have my doors? You can place your doll. No, that's not my gun. On the pillow. Like some of us sleep with dolls. I don't know. my side. If I sleep with dolls, or if the doll uh, that he used to sleep with left in my bed, I wake up and the uh, doll hit my eyes. <laughs> I like that. So number four is we can tuck the bed, uh, tuck the sheet under the mattress. We can split can the bednya di bawah kasur. Yeah, so four. Or, or I'm going to say what? I'm going to say it next. What the ship? What the ship under? Okay, and so that's why we'll be in finally. Finally, the rope has come back. Two bedroom, they do the attack at home. Cover the bed. We're like that. Well, there you go. Now you have nice, easy five steps to make your bed. Yeah. Silakan bisa di screen itu dulu buat anda mau. You can use this as a reference. Yeah. So next time there is this question about uh, apa namanya, uh, making your bed again, you can answer it. Okay. Is there any question? Mr. Boleh ya kalau nulisnya second? Boleh, ya. So instead of first, you can say, uh, firstly, you can say first. Okay. Pull this shit. Yeah, right. You can even say, Second and third, rather than second day and third day. This is also Now, rather fourth, the fourth, so I use next. Nanti kalau misalnya mau kelima lagi, you can also use next again. It's okay, you can use next as many times as you want, as long as it's not the last one. Kalau last one, yang mending pakai friendly. Okay, you too, yeah? So, I'll go to the next page. Here we go. Okay. Task four is we're going to write the instructions on how to operate a washing machine with the verbs below. Now use the adverbs of sequence. Uh, well, it's just a picture of a woman with a washing machine. So how to use a washing machine. Alright, this is how we use the washing machine. Okay, now give up. 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 Give up.
one. No, we use it first. We are not close. Oh, first, put your clothes in the machine. Okay. And then uh, detergent, and then detergent compartment. Second, Ini buat yang ini buat yang mungkin cucinya pakai itu ya putaran gram gitu ya yang bisa kelihatan ada dari atas gitu sama yang uh, mesin cucinya modelnya apa vertikal ya kalau mesin cuci masih berupa tangan gitu ya instruksinya mungkin beda atau mungkin yang masih dimasukin gitu uh, probably different but uh, this one is like the modern one I think you can see down there there you go that was the program ah uh, choose the program ini kita pilih ya program itu ini m m nya m m a dan British English kalau pernah pakai m di belakang program itu bahasa American English nah choose the program here means you're choosing the way the washing machine uh, are going to wash your clothes so it's going to wash your clothes. And then uh, here we can say next. Next up. Uh, so you can see we have request, we have two, okay, and we have put. Yeah. Complete, yeah. So then this is how you use a washing machine. Ah, silakan. We have first. Put your clothes in the machine. So we have put here this thing, right? Yeah. Then put the detergent into the detergent compartment. Put the powder. You make. Choose the program. Let's choose the other program. The next price is five. Okay. So this is a nice way and very easy way to operate a modern, uh, apa namanya, washing machine. Yeah. Washing machine zaman sekarang banyak yang dilengkapi dengan model saat udah seperti ini. So it's very easy if you have never washed, uh, even if you have never washed clothes with machine before, you can still do it. Yeah? Jadi buat kalian yang di rumah, yang belum pernah mencuci, kalau mesin cuci, belajarlah mencuci dengan mesin cuci. Yeah? Kalau misalkan belum, uh, cobalah belajar dengan tangan sendiri, because washing is one of the survival skills. You have to be able to do it. Yeah? So with machine or without machine, you have to be able to do it. Next. Uh, ada yang bilang, bang Ustaz, Mister, I have a lot of servant, I have a lot of helper. Waduh, I know, but it will be still best if you wash your own clothes, right? I mean, one, it save money, <laughs> and two, yeah, if you happen to, if you happen to keep money inside your pocket and then you wash it yourself, it feels like, oh, ada nemu uang lima ratus Oh my god, yeah, it feels like it feels so happy. Even though if it was probably like thirty or two <laughs> you feel like a treasure. I'm on a treasure of uh, what am I? Of uh, Jack Sparrow in my pocket. Okay, and that's why we are going to choose one of the topics and discuss with your friend. Use the space below to make notes. Do you know how to one protect the environment? Two, be a famous YouTuber. Three, earn money quickly. Four, sell something online quickly. Or five lose weight fast. Oh, I know almost all of them except number five, as you can see. Yeah, but here's the idea: you can use this topic to talk with your friends. And uh, this one is basically uh, some way so that you can talk about future. And also, you can use the order adverb uh, of order tadi. Jadi, kamu bisa menggunakan adverb untuk sesuatu tadi. Okay, uh, which one we gonna start? Kita akan coba pilih yang mana ya? 
how about protect the environment yeah okay guys let's talk about what can we do to protect the environment okay i'm not sure about losing weight I'm, i mean look at me I'm, i was not successful so protect the environment first we have to one separate our taxes plastik organik mereka punya tempat sendiri sama kertas ya kenapa karena nanti kalau daur ulang uh, if you go to a recycling house you bring them in one pack and then uh, you recycle them and if you can save money sometimes ya di sana uh, my family my mom actually she joins one of these uh, you know they call it garbage bag ya jadi pang pampak gitu ya and uh, after a while uh, she gave a lot of uh, the trash into this place he got money he got some money as a share of that trash and yeah it was so it was a quite quite big actually some of the the sum of money cukup lumayan besar kita bayar uh, kita kumpulin sampah dan kita dapat duit and that is a really good thing okay uh, we have separate our trash so we can always do recycle and uh, take your energies save the other house energy and uh, coming off Then I think you can pour control garbage or flash into water. Yeah, like river, sea, lakes, don't. The so water if you throw garbage or trash into the water, they don't disappear. Water is not an eliminator. They just stay there and float and poisons everything around. Yeah. Then number four, you also say five, you can this one is very important, guys. Protect wildlife. Again, don't oh don't, yeah, that is don't eat wildlife. Number five is very important, and I want to highlight it out because, in case you haven't realized it, we are in this pandemic because somebody decided to do number five. Yeah, because somebody decided to eat uh, some unclean animal, yeah, some unclean wildlife. We got this virus spreading all over the world, destroying people, destroying economy. Yeah. So it's very important to not do number five. I think by now we should have already uh, banned or prohibit the trade or selling or consuming uh, anything that is from wildlife. If it's like farm animals, apa namanya, uh, it might be still okay, but not wildlife. Come on, man. This is bad. Yeah. So these are five of my tips on how to, uh, how to protect the environment. There are still more, but you can always uh, apply on your own with my Okay. In past six, you're going to draw an invention, give it a name and instruction to use it. Then pretend to the class. Hmm. If I want to invent something, I would invent. Um, something that is simple and not time consuming. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I want to invent this thing. Well, it's not exactly an invention, but I think I think we have probably used this. Yeah. It's called this one. Okay. 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 And 
So, this is. How, how should I get the name again? Yeah. So, this is a device to speak or to have a conversation from a distance, but not too long. And you only uh, use this device and nothing else, no electricity. So, it's basically a parabola shape. Uh, the device here, you have to get to that Okay, and, and there's a small hole here, almost like a left here, the head here. Yeah? So, oh. okay, so this is how you do it. This is already looks like um, a megaphone, yeah. But you can say like this, yeah. you can say you can speak something, and then this uh, parabolic, uh, parabolic uh, device will make the sound focus to this area, and then it can be heard by the same device, vice versa. Like that. <laughs> I know it's not really a uh, future technology, but th this one is uh, energy saving. You don't need a lot of electricity for it. And uh, you can just talk, right? Loud. And people can still pick up what you say. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure people have already in front of this, but let me, let me give this away. Uh, Oh, yeah. Such a great invention name. I don't care. <laughs> so this is a device that allows you to check from a distance without using electricity. <laughs> okay. I better close this one close this one down before I you know embarrass myself even further. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, it was fun. Uh, it was funny as well. <laughs> Talking about modern life and modern technology uh, in the modern life. Well, I'm going to close this one down with a quote from a very famous video game producer that I like. And it actually says, the future is now. I'm Mr. Gabe. Thank you very much for joining the free online class. See you again. Bye-bye.